Hello, this presentation will cover the proposed no action remedy for operable unit two of the US finishing Cone Mill Superfund site, which is located in Greenville, South Carolina. My name is Scott Martin and I am the remedial project manager for the site and I will be walking you through this presentation. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, EPA has modified the public meeting format to include this video as an alternate way for people to get information about this proposed plan. This video presentation provides the same information as an in-person proposed plan meeting would. The goal of this presentation is to provide information about the proposed plan for operable unit two of the site. Additional details are in the proposed plan and in the administrative record, which are available online at the links shown. The administrative record can be accessed by any computer. The public comment period on this proposed plan will be from Monday, January 11th, 2021 to Wednesday, February 10th, 2021. Please use the contact information listed here to submit your comments or questions to the EPA. After the end of the comment period, EPA will address all comments and questions in the responsiveness summary, which is part of the record of decision. Superfund sites are discovered when the presence of hazardous waste is made known to EPA. Once a site is identified, all existing information is reviewed and the site is inspected to determine its history and effects on the population and the environment. Information collected during the assessment phase is used to score the site according to the danger posed to human health and the environment. If a site has a high enough score and meets all other criteria, it will be placed on the National Priority List, or the NPL. After listing, the Remedial Investigation, or RI, begins. This involves gathering and analyzing numerous samples of soil, surface water, groundwater, and waste from locations throughout the site and near the site borders. The investigation also involves assessing risk posed by the site. When the RA is completed, potential cleanup alternatives are analyzed in the Feasibility Study, or FS. When cleanup alternatives are developed, the option considered best for the site is proposed to the community for evaluation and comment in a proposed plan, which is the stage we are currently in. A responsiveness summary of the public comments and the responses to those comments will be created once the comment period ends. Public comments can change the course of action for the site, so it's important to submit any comments that you may have. The remedial action that is ultimately chosen for the site, along with the reasons for its selection, are set forth in the record of decision that will be created after the public comments have been addressed. From there, the remedy will be designed and implemented during the remedial design, or RD, and the remedial action, or RA, respectively. The U.S. Finishing Cone Mills plant has a long history in the Greenville community. In 1903, the Arrington family constructed and operated a textile bleaching and finishing facility under the name of Union Bleachery. Between 1903 and 1947, the plant was expanded on several occasions. In 1947, the facility was sold to the Aspen Corporation and in 1957 to Cone Mills. Cone Mills operated the plant until 1984 under the name Union Bleachery slash Cone Mills. American Fast Print purchased the facility in May of 1984 and operated under the name U.S. Finishing until November 2003 when the main plant was partially destroyed by fire. In 2003, the main facility area was destroyed by fire and operations ceased production and the facility has remained closed ever since. The State of South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control conducted an expanded site investigation which found contamination at the main facility as well as groundwater contamination. In 2011, the site became final on the EPA National Priority List. EPA is conducting the cleanup as a fund lead site, which means the federal government is paying for the cleanup. Shortly after the site was listed to the NPL, the EPA initiated a time-critical removal action at the main facility to remove or contain asbestos that became exposed to the environment after the main facility was destroyed by fire. 
The site is located approximately two and a half miles north of downtown Greenville, South Carolina. The site is approximately 260 acres in size and is made up of multiple parcels. Due to the size of the site, the EPA has divided the site into sections, which we refer to as operable units. Operable Unit 1 is the main facility area. This is the area where textile production was conducted and most of the buildings associated with the site are located. OU2 consists of the outlying areas that are off the main facility property. OU3 consists of the site-wide groundwater. Today's presentation will focus only on Operable Unit 2 off main facility. Future proposed plan presentations will cover the main facility and groundwater proposed remedies. This figure shows all the areas that are associated with the U.S. Finishing Cone Mill site. The area outlined in red shows land that was once owned by the facility. As I mentioned earlier, the total size of these areas is approximately 260 acres. You can see the main plant area outlined in black. The main plant area consists of approximately 400,000 square feet of building slab, which remains after the removal action conducted by EPA. The main plant area also contains 10 smaller buildings as well as the former water treatment plant. The upper right side of this figure shows the drained northern reservoir as well as the forested tract. The lower left side of the figure shows the former aeration lagoon, the Reedy River floodplain area, and the northwestern reservoir. The former Mill Village neighborhood is in the middle of the figure. The site is bordered on the west by the Reedy River and on the east by Langston Creek. Just to the south of the site, the Reedy River and Langston Creek combine and then flow south to downtown Greenville. The areas outlined in red on this figure are the topic of this proposed plan presentation. These areas are called Operable Unit 2 Off Main Facility, and these are the areas that do not pose a risk to human health or the environment and do not require remedial action. The EPA is releasing this no action proposed plan for a portion of the site. This proposed plan proposes no action for the areas of concern identified on this figure and that were sampled and do not pose an unacceptable risk to human health or the environment based on an unlimited exposure, unrestricted use land scenario. AOC1 is the permitted sludge landfill. AOC9 is Langston Creek surface water and sediment. AOC13 is the Reedy River surface water and sediment. AOC14 is the Northern Reservoir, AOC15 is the Northwestern Reservoir, and AOC17 is the Forested Tract. Combined, these areas total approximately 150 acres in size. EPA is proposing these no action areas first so that they can be partially deleted from the national priorities list because this will enhance the availability of reuse in these areas. EPA will continue to evaluate cleanup options for the remaining portion of the site. Additional proposed plans and comment periods will be provided in the future. To understand the no action proposed plan, let's review the typical Superfund process. A site is discovered and referred to the EPA, and if it's contaminated badly enough, it's listed on the national priorities list. The EPA then begins a remedial investigation to understand where contamination has spread and what risk contamination poses to human health and the environment. If EPA finds an unacceptable risk, then EPA conducts a feasibility study to develop and evaluate remedial alternatives that would address those risks. EPA presents its preferred remedial alternative and asks for public comment in a proposed plan. The EPA then documents the final cleanup plan in a record of decision. The next steps are the remedial design and remedial action. When the remedial action is complete, the last step is to delete the site from the national priorities list. The Superfund process for Operable Unit 2 is a little bit different than normal. The remedial investigation identified multiple areas of concern that do not pose an unacceptable risk to human health or the environment based on residential land use. 
In this situation, EPA can skip the feasibility study and go straight to the proposed plan and propose what is called a no action decision. This is documented in a no action record of decision and there is no design or remedial action. EPA can delete that part of the site from the national priorities list in what is called a partial deletion, which is the end of the Superfund process for that part of the site. The main facility and site-wide groundwater will be discussed in future proposed plans and records of decision. After the site was listed to the NPL in 2011, EPA began a site-wide remedial investigation. Today's presentation will only discuss areas that were included as part of the Operable Unit 2 remedial investigation. Additional proposed plan presentations will be developed in the future for Operable Unit 1, Main Facility, and Operable Unit 3, Site-wide Groundwater. Additional details regarding the site-wide remedial investigation can be found in the administrative record. The following areas were investigated as part of the Operable Unit 2 remedial investigation. AOC 1, the permitted sludge landfill. AOC 13, the Reedy River. AOC 15, the Northwestern Reservoir, are located on the western side of the site. AOC 9, Langston Creek. AOC 14, Northern Reservoir. And AOC 17, Forested Tract, are located on the eastern side of the site. Please refer to the figure presented earlier in the presentation for locations. AOC 1, the permitted sludge landfill. This wooded area is located west of the Leicester Street Alley and approximately half a mile west of the main facility. All soil borings were advanced to 16 feet below ground surface and one soil boring was advanced to 20 feet below ground surface. Each of the soil borings was split into four different sections for sampling. Each core sample was analyzed for cyanide, volatile organic compounds, pesticides, PCBs, and four samples were analyzed for hexavalent chromium. AOC 9 is Langston Creek, which is located on the eastern portion of the site. Surface water and sediment samples were taken in AOC 9, Langston Creek, starting downstream of the main facility near the confluence with the Reedy River, and then progressed upstream beyond the northern reservoir. Surface water and sediment samples were taken at each location. Analysis included metals, mercury, cyanide, pesticides, PCBs, and volatile organic compounds. AOC 13 is the Reedy River, which is on the western side of the site. Similar to Langston Creek, surface water and sediment samples were collected from the Reedy River. Sampling began downstream from the confluence of the Reedy River and Langston Creek and progressed upstream to beyond the northwestern reservoir. Surface water and sediment samples were taken at each sample location. Analysis included metals, mercury, cyanide, pesticides, PCBs, and volatile organic compounds. AOC 14 is the Northern Reservoir. The Northern Reservoir is located approximately a half a mile north of the main facility. The Northern Reservoir was used as part of the process water recycling system. It is currently a dry, barren, sandy area. The northern reservoir covers approximately 500,000 square feet or 11 and a half acres. EPA collected surface and subsurface soil samples from 12 soil borings within the northern reservoir in 2011 and four locations in 2013. Soil samples were analyzed for metals, mercury, volatile organic compounds, PCBs, and pesticides, and cyanide. AOC 15 is the Northwestern Reservoir. The Northwestern Reservoir is located northwest of the main facility and was also part of the process water recycling system. EPA collected three surface water and sediment samples 
as well as one surface soil sample. All surface water and sediment samples were co-located. Samples were analyzed for metals, mercury, cyanide, pesticide, PCBs, and volatile organic compounds. AOC 17 is the forested tract. The forested tract is located across from the main facility near the Old Buncombe Road main gate. It is an area of planted pine trees covering about 2.5 acres. EPA collected five surface soil samples from zero to one feet below ground surface. Soil samples were analyzed for metals, mercury, hexavalent chromium, cyanide, volatile organic compounds, pesticides, and PCBs. The forested track has no history of being associated with facility operations. As I mentioned earlier, this presentation is about the parts of the site that pose no unacceptable risk to human health or the environment. So what is meant by an unacceptable risk? A release of a hazardous substance must pose an unacceptable level of risk for EPA to take an action under CERCLA. EPA does not have authority to clean up all contaminants to zero or to take actions based simply on a detection of a contaminant. The statute and EPA guidance lay out the concept of unacceptable risk for decision making. For carcinogens, that unacceptable risk level is a 1 in 10,000 probability of developing an excess lifetime case of cancer. For non-carcinogens, the unacceptable risk level is if the potential exposure is high enough to cause a negative health effect. In the risk assessment, we calculate a hazard index to quantify the non-cancer risks. The baseline risk assessment evaluated risks to human health and the environment from site-related contamination. Based on the results of the risk assessment, there are no unacceptable risks to human health or the environment in the following area of concerns based on an unrestricted use unlimited exposure scenario. This means that these areas are acceptable for residential use. The Operable Unit 2 Ecological Risk Assessment divided the site into the following ecological exposure areas listed below. The results of the ecological risk assessment show that there's a limited potential for ecological harm and the levels do not require an action under CERCLA. Summary of the preferred alternative. EPA has concluded that Operable Unit 2 meets the criteria for no action required to ensure protectiveness. This means that there is no unacceptable risk to human health and the environment under the anticipated residential, commercial, industrial, or recreational land use scenarios. OU2 meets the unlimited use, unlimited exposure, or UUUE designation. Approximately 150 acres will now be eligible for deletion from the MPL. The figure presented earlier in this presentation shows the extent of OU2 outlined in red. Remedial alternatives for the remainder of the site will be developed in future feasibility studies and presented in future proposed plans. The public comment period on this proposed plan will be from Monday, January 11th, 2021 to Wednesday, February 10th, 2021. Please use the contact information listed here to submit your comments or questions to EPA. All mailed comments must be postmarked by February 10th. After the end of the comment period, EPA will address all comments and questions in the responsiveness summary which is part of the Record of Decision. The public will be notified when the Record of Decision is complete. This concludes the presentation for OU2 No Action Proposed Plan. Thank you for your time.